Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, in today's video, we're going to be building a cat cage. Well, more like a cat condo. This thing is anything but small. I happen to have a three-dimensional drawing with some dimensions on it. Let me show you what that looks like so you get a better idea of what it is we're going to be building. Okay, here, I've got to reach around the camera here a little bit, but uh, this is pretty much the drawing. Now, this is a project that uh, I'm doing for a contractor called Built by Newkirk. Uh, I do a lot of projects for him. Uh, he's a local contractor here in town and he does a lot of design work, and this just happens to be something that uh, one of his clients are looking for. Basically, what it is, let me see if I can get in here. Um, this is the three-dimensional drawing of what it actually uh, looks like. Uh, it is basically it goes up against the outside of a house. So the cats have access to be able to come from inside the house to outside and be able to hang out inside here without uh, wandering off or, or, uh, or getting chased down by some coyotes or whatever. Uh, so basically the length of this thing is 11 foot 8 inches long. Uh, this is a rectangular uh, section right here that's about nine feet long. It's about two foot eight uh, away from the house, and it's about four foot four inches tall. It's going to have an access door in this section, and then there's a tower on the very end uh, that is uh, two foot eight inches square and roughly six foot four inches tall. And it also uh, has an access door. And it as well. There are going to be some shelves on the inside the cats can hang out on. And uh, basically that is what it is going to be. You can see here's all the dimensions I have to work with. Uh, he is very thorough with all of his uh, design work. It makes it really easy for me to work with. Uh, the material of choice here is going to be one inch square tube, 095 wall thickness. And then we are also going to put on the very outside, you can see right here, this is some two inch by two inch. And I believe it's uh, eighth of an inch thick uh, wire mesh and that is going to be going around the whole outside. So, I don't know, it can be a fun little project. Well, let's go ahead and get started on today's project. But first, I got to crush some cans. that one get in there. Oh yeah, the can crusher. That uh, has become quite a conversational piece here in the shop. All right, so we're getting started here. We're gonna start cutting the pieces out. Um, we're using, like I said, this is a one inch square tube. This is a 095 wall thickness here. And I'm just uh, <clears throat> cutting the 45s out and cutting all the material I need. You see, I got the Steel Thunder back on there. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, how many cuts do I get out of that? How well it works? You know, it, it works really well. And literally, I get hundreds, if not thousands, of cuts off of a blade. Now, the shop gets, you know, used daily here in the shop. It gets used daily here in the shop. And, uh, and it just cut after cut after cut after cut. But eventually they do, you know, uh, wear out or get dull. And uh, I would just happen to be in between blades right there, but we got it all figured out and it's all good. All right, so I'm just assembling the first part of this and you can see I finally got lucky. Look at this thing, it just barely fits on my welding table and uh, I'm able to clamp it down. And I, I can't tell you uh, how nice that is, not having something hanging off the edge that you have to support or or something that's just way big that's going all the way across to my workbench to the other side. You know, um, this is really good. It's able, it's manageable for me. And you can just see with the table dogs on there and just clamp everything down. It always, it always is perfectly square, you know, but it, it, it never, never fails. It's just a habit of mine. I have to check square. This is what I was brought up doing. And if you guys just don't have this capability, that's a very important thing to do. 
If, uh, if you just have something flat you're working off, whether it be the ground or workbench, is to check square. Check square by measuring from one end to the other and having an equal dimension. Uh, that's the way to do it. If you start, if you start off square, everything, is, <clears throat> everything will end up being uh, really good. All right, so just a couple braces in right here and then uh, uh, just grinding the wells down uh, nice and flat before I flip it over. We are working off the HTP uh, 200i with easy set uh, for this portion of the project. Uh, this is uh, spooled with some 30 thousandths and the machine is just what it says. Uh, uh, easy set, basically turn it on, dial it to the thickness of material you're using, the wire diameter that you're using, and you're off and running. In most cases, it's very accurate. It's very simple simple machine to operate with all right and so I'm just getting some braces in here now this is something that the the the, the drawing didn't call for uh, and, and not that he not that he didn't want to put them in there it's just that uh, uh, as I'm building this I realized that if I don't put something in it's the uh, the mesh that we're gonna be don't be putting on will be flexing in these areas and uh, by adding a couple of braces here uh, that's gonna help that stiffen that up and it's not gonna be in the way of the uh, overall uh, fabrication of the project so all right just added those in and did some last minute uh, grinding here and then uh, finishing up any welding that i that i have while i can while it's uh while it's on this side and just maneuvering uh, from one side of the table to the other just to get the areas uh that i can get you know this uh, you try to just work with whatever is possibly easiest and i could have left it there and then you know, reach to the center or it could have lifted up but by me moving this from one side to the other it just allows me to get in there a little bit better and, and uh, catch these welds just you got to do what you can to make things a little bit easier all right with the one rack out of the way it is time now to start on the front side the front side is going to be a little bit shorter about four inches shorter uh, we're going to have uh, a little bit of a rake on the roof there the roof is not something that I'm doing. Uh, the client is going to be doing that, and it's going to be adding some type of uh, corrugated uh, material. I'm not certain if it's plastic or if it's uh, metal, but uh, that's what he's going to be installing. And I believe there's like a four-inch difference uh, in pitch right there. So this uh, this is the front side of it, and it is a little bit shorter. Basically, the same process. Uh, big frame, you know, starting off square, and just grabbing the welds I can while I got it in a position to do that. And of course, grinding everything while I can. You know, try to minimize the amount of work <laughs> that you have to do by trying to be efficient. It, you know, it doesn't always work that way. I try to be as efficient as I can, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. All right, this is the door frame. And I'm just getting it set into position right there. You can see I got everything just clamped down nice and tight. And I'll be checking the dimensions here and then uh, ready to to uh, just get everything tacked into place here. And you can see it's, uh, it's a day or two later and now I'm operating off a different machine. This is the uh, Propulse 220 MTS. And I bounce around just because I can, you know, I like to be able to use all the machines that I have. Uh, you know, some of them uh, definitely have purposes uh, for certain things and uh, I like to utilize them uh, as best I can. All right, assembly time, finally getting somewhere. I know it, uh, it seems fairly quick going along the video, but this this process, believe it or not, there's a lot of things that happened in between uh, these two frames. So this is this is probably about two weeks later. Uh, I'm finally uh, getting ready, ready to uh, uh, do a little bit of assembly here. And here's an interesting thing on the welding table. You know, I got these uh, vertical slots that the uh, uh, that the fabrication clamps uh, you know fit into, and you can see I've got them clamped to the side, and I've got it nice and straight. And uh, I got a nice straight piece there, and I'm gonna pull that frame in nice and tight, nice and square, nice and plumb. And then I'm gonna start welding everything together, and it's gonna keep it that way. You know, if you don't do that, uh, you learn the hard way, let me tell you. And uh, I could have very easily have built this thing, and I found out that it was uh, two inches out of plumb, and then everything welded together, and now this big mess you have. So, you know, the best thing is to double check and be sure you're nice and square and plumb in anything you're doing saves a lot of headache down the road all right these are the roof rafters i guess or roof tails whatever you want to whatever you want to call them braces um 
This is what I'm gonna use to uh, tie this together. I got the bottom ones in, and so now I'm gonna get this here on either end. Uh, the first one's gonna go in here, and then I'll go to the other side and uh, get it in, and then we'll have the, the frame itself. Uh, you can see it's starting to get a little bit dark. Sorry for the uh, for the darkness there, but uh, yeah, the sun was setting. <clears throat> And I just wanted to get these in. Ultimately, once I get this one in right here, I'll be shutting that garage door down just like that. And I got a little bit of room and a little bit of light. All right, I've got these things placed, I believe, um, somewhere around 16 inches on center. And I'm just going to go along here. You can see I'm up on top of my welding table. And I'm just going to, I've got these things pre marked and got some clamps. And I'm just, uh, clamping them and just tacking them in place as I go along right here. I figured this is the best way to do it, just the way the the the, uh, the condo or the cage, whatever you want to call it, is going to be standing up and this is the way it's going to be and I just wanted to be sure. Uh, I could have tilted it on the side I, I, I suppose to do this, but uh, I just wanted to be sure that I get everything right where it's going to be and it's going to stay square so that's why i chose to leave it standing vertically and me get up on the table to put these things in i just thought that that would be the best uh, situation for me at the time once i get them tacked in i can deal with that and there they all are and uh now i got my welding jacket on and uh, a better set of gloves uh, i know that this is going to be a lot of welding right here I'm going to be going around and getting both sides of all of this across the top and probably going to be down getting a lot of it uh, on the sides as well. So, uh, you know, a lot of times I, I, I just, you see me wearing sleeves, uh, uh, short sleeves rather, and uh, that's because I'm just tacking, you know, tacking things into place. But when I get into some uh, continuous welding like this, um, I definitely get my jacket on. Had a little problem there with the garage door clearance, so I got that shut down, and uh, there we go. Got a little bit more room. I got to look into getting a roll-up door. You know, I could create so much more space. This uh, cuts about three foot of space off of my garage. All right, just finishing up the welding right here. Everything is starting to starting to take shape here. You know, you don't realize how much welding there really is. You know, uh, there's a lot of joints. There's four per piece, and there's just there's just a lot. And uh, that was just uh, that was just a bunch of welding. Well, here it is the next day, obviously, <clears throat> or the next night, I should say. And uh, I'm just now uh, cleaning up these welds. This is going to be powder coated, and uh, I'm just finishing up and getting all everything smoothed up on the outside, uh, you know, where I can. All right, there it is, finally, one portion of it, at least the frame complete. All right, so now it's the door. Uh, the door needs to get put in right here, and uh, you know, I'm just getting some uh, braces in here. Yeah, I decided to put this brace in right here. I think the plan's uh, uh, not certain if it called for this or if the door was gonna go full height, but I wanted to bring it down a little bit. I was just allowing a little bit of overhang for the roofing material on there, and I'm afraid if I, if I took the door to the top when the door was open, it might hit some of the roofing. So I lowered that down just a little bit. Um, no problems there I checked with the uh, designer and he said that would be fine and then these are the door frames I'm quickly going to throw this together I know this is sped up um, this section right here but uh, it's almost I built this thing almost as fast as you're seeing this that's how convenient it is having a having a nice flat table some fixture clamps and getting everything <clears throat> nice and square that uh, goes together pretty pretty quick you know, the old time the way I should say the way I did it before I had all this stuff was uh, just on a flat piece of quarter inch flat plate. And, uh, you know, something like this really would have taken me a long time battling all the time trying to get it square. That's a tendency to want to warp a little bit when you put some heat to it to keep the clamps on it here on a table like this. And that uh, keeps them nice and straight. All right. A couple little shims in the bottom and a couple little braces here to hold it in place keep it nice and square and i'm a fan of these bullet hinges lately uh, there's a few names for them i'm not sure but uh, i'm going to call them bullet hinges they're they're very simple to install uh, they work really efficiently and they have a lot of sizes for a lot of different weight i've been using them for a lot of the gates i've been building lately and i like it um, you know, just like that, they just put a couple welds on there and they've got this brass bushing between them and uh, they work really smooth. And for me, for now, uh, 
There's no play in it. You know, once you put them in there, that's it. Other hinges I've used, uh, you put them in and, and uh, they sag a little bit when you take out the shims. So these, these, these stay in place. All right, here's the two inch square um, material we're using for the outside right here. You can see I've just got it clamped in place. I'm taking a Sharpie and I'm just marking out uh, the outside dimension right here and where the door is gonna be. And then I'll take that down and I'll get the cutoff saw and we're gonna cut those out. All right, the table's gonna get a little crowded here. I've moved that down to the very edge and I create a little bit of space for this. And I'm just using my Mercer cutoff wheel right here. And you can see that uh, goes through there no problem. You know, some of them I'm cutting right on the joint right here, and some of them I have to cut in the middle. And that's just because that's just the way they line up. And uh, you, know, so you can see those right there. Those are sharp edges. Well, ultimately on those, what I'm going to do um, is uh, weld every single one of those, and that'll kind of, uh, the weld bead on the very end uh, kind of softens that up. That, that took me a little time to figure that out, but that worked really good. This one right here, you can see it's right in the very end and those aren't as bad. All right, so the first piece here is going in. I'm just gonna clamp it in place, uh, and then I'm just gonna go along and just tack it into place. And while I'm tacking it, I, you can see me, I'm pressing uh, the mesh up against the frame, and uh, I'm just gonna about every third or fourth one right here for now. I just wanna get it held into place, be sure everything is nice and flat. You know, the beauty of uh, having 15-foot uh, gun leads on, uh, on your machines is just like this. You can see I'm having to reach around the corner right there and uh, go a pretty good distance. And uh, that's, uh, that's been convenient, having long gun leads, that's for sure. Uh, these are a couple little braces. Now, I didn't, I didn't film this right here. Uh, what these are, just a piece of uh, one-inch uh, angle iron, and they're cut at one inch. And then I've got a couple holes drilled in them. Uh, they're they're going to put some platforms on this area, and uh, this is uh, what they're going to use to to uh, bolt the platforms to. Uh, I wanted the idea is to get these uh, uh, welded in place prior to closing everything off. Again, trying to be as efficient as I can. Uh, you know, I can imagine me just getting this all all clear, you know, closed off like this then I'd have to crawl in from the end and uh, try to deal with that from the inside so I was just trying to get everything I could done well before I closed everything off you know there's probably other ways of doing it uh, this worked out the best way to me you know, just a uh, an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel it seemed to work uh, pretty good uh, you know there's uh, maybe there's some big big snips you could use I'm not certain I, or a shear I don't have any of that I don't have a shear so uh, this is the best way I found it worked for me all right, just getting this welded up on the end, then we move moving to the back here. Now, this is what I was talking about right here on these sharp pieces that uh, are by themselves. I ultimately uh, have got every single, you know, weld every single one of them, and get them, get them welded in, and put a little bead right on the end, and that uh, that kind of dulls that sharp point. Last thing you want to do is have somebody cut themselves on a, on a sharp piece there. And then once I got everything all tacked in, I did the same thing with all the pieces that I had that were that were like that. You guys are seeing the lathe in the background there. That's only about a couple of days old at this point right there. And uh, I got a lot of comments of people telling me, get that thing covered up. It's going to be a problem. And uh, I've done that. Thank you for, for your concern. I didn't realize it. You know, all the grinding and dust that happens in there, it did get dirty quick. I, I gave it a really nice bath and got it all cleaned up really nice. And then uh, I was ultimately got a cover on it here a few days later, but uh, that's uh, working out pretty good. All right, just cutting up the opening right here. This is the entrance of where the uh, pets are gonna be going through from the house into, into the cage here. So something like this where, um, you know, it doesn't really require that. Like you can see me going about every fourth one or so. That's all really it requires. And then I'm pushing it against the frame as I'm welding along to be sure I get a nice tight fit. Now the only place that I, uh, um, that I get every single one, it would be something probably like this one right here where, uh, you know, you got those sharp edges.
a little bit short right here and then I thought maybe that might be a problem um, but I was able to take just a short piece and cut it and then uh, you can see I laid it on top of the nice smooth edge that's there against another smooth edge and then I just kind of welded those together um, that that worked out pretty good uh, you know everything stayed nice and straight and it was plenty strong and you really couldn't tell the difference once I got everything all done there it's amazing how strong that thing becomes you can just see by you know it's pretty flexible and as soon as this thing start getting welded together man it, it just all of a sudden becomes rigid it's it's strong all right there it is that one is done and complete and I can finally uh, move from that over to the tower which I did I set that aside for now and now we're coming on to the tower the tower is that uh, two foot eight by uh, square by about six foot four tall I believe it was can't really remember the exact dimensions but something like that and I'm just getting everything cut all the pieces cut for that you know I might have mentioned that uh, uh, you know sometimes when you look at drawings and plans at least I do uh, you know they look on pieces of paper they look oh that's that's no problem you know I don't pay sometimes that's my downfall I don't pay that much close close attention to it and and when I looked at the drawing at first, I go, oh, yeah, that's, that's something simple and small. But when I got right down to it and started building it and re real, really realized how big it was, uh, this project right here, I had a lot going on in between uh, this project and a, and a few other things I got going on. So it took about, uh, you know, this, this didn't take me a couple of days. This, this ended up being a, a month-long project. I was trying to do a bunch of things in between everything. So... Uh, the total time for me building this thing was probably a month or a little bit, a little bit more than that. Yeah, it was, it was nice to get it completed uh, <laughs> and get on to the next one. Let me tell you. All right, it's basically the same thing here. You can see I'm just uh, clamping everything down with fixture clamps, and uh, you know this is front and back. And I'm trying to be a little bit more efficient here. I just stacked them up on top of each other, and I'm trying to find the fastest and best way. Uh, to get moving along with this project and by doing that so it seemed fairly quick I was able to weld them and grind them right there next to each other all right another straight edge right there to pull it nice and nice and plumb all right you see me using these dynamite clamps right here this is something new that's onto the market uh, they sent me out a couple of these things to give it a try and uh, uh, you know they do have their purpose on clamping things together and I gotta say they work pretty good uh, dynamiteclamps.com uh, they got uh, a couple of different sizes over there, and yeah, they're pretty efficient. All right, a couple cross supports in here, uh, and this is starting to come together. And then, then this one up here, you can see I don't have a lot of clearance from, the, from my ceiling right there. Once again, I pushed it to the limit, and this thing here, I believe, from my table to the top is uh, like six foot eight, and this thing is six foot four at the tallest part. I'm just glad that it, it was able to fit in there. Gave me a little bit of room to, to get in there and take care of that. All right, so these two pieces are not going to be welded together. Um, they're going to be a slip fit. You can see that's what I'm doing right here. This is a piece of uh, eighth by two inch flat bar stock, and I am welding it to the tower side here. And then I've, uh, you might be able to see them. I've pre-drilled some holes on the, on the other side. And then the idea is for the tower to slip into the other part and then be screwed together once it's in place the reason for doing this is for um, transportation purposes for one and installation so we could get it into where it was going comfortably and uh, and and once it's all put together uh, it was uh, it was a nice tight fit and, and it worked out pretty good now here are some braces that i need to put in for the shelving there's some diagonal shelving that's going to be going in here and uh, some of these clamps are you can see they're custom made on an angle and I had to make room for the door that uh, was closing and be able to open and close the door yet still have room for that shelf to be mounted to. So there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of thinking there but got it done. All right this will be the door. Now you see I got both uh, both uh, the tower and the other part rectangular part sitting in the very edge of my table and there's just enough room to get this door um, fabricated square double checking all the time see my torch lead holder right there that's the mig gun holder and you might have saw earlier uh, you know the angle grinder holder uh, you know those things are convenient to have 
Um, and we have at times if you're doing a lot. Uh, they work pretty good. Keep things uh, accessible for you when you need them. And uh, you know, you need both hands, you, know, you just be able to put it away and, and uh, it's quick use. Those are available on my website, jimbosgarage.com. This is something I, I, I've showed before. Uh, uh, this is something that I like to do uh, when I grind my wells down. Is uh, just a non-woven pad right there, and just soften that up. And man, it, that really takes that edge from the grinder off and makes everything nice and smooth. All right, time to get this door put on here again. A couple of bullet hinges. Uh, it just seems like the more I do with these things, that the, the easier they get to install. You know, especially I'm using the smaller ones right here. These doors are really lightweight, and uh, this is going to work out just right. Now that I'm officially out of space on my welding table, now I'm over to my workbench. <laughs> I don't know. I keep saying I need a bigger shop, but uh, I don't see that happening in the uh, near future. Just make do with what you have. All right, just getting everything welded in here. here. The last, you know, one of, one of the important things, too, that I, that I try to achieve right here is to keep the pattern of the two-inch square running consistently all the way around uh, so it all looks like it just wrapped, and, and I didn't want to have anything that was off. Um, so I, I at least uh, took that into consideration and tried to do the best I could to try to make it line up all the way around. I had a couple of them that were off about an eighth. Uh, really wasn't noticeable. Uh, but for the most part, everything stayed in there uh, nice, nice and square. Well, I can finally see the end in sight coming here. Uh, this has been a while putting this thing together. And uh, I got to say, I really enjoyed uh, this thing starting to take shape. And it's, it's always satisfying when you get down to the end of a project like this and you see that uh, it's actually coming together uh, the way that the, the drawing is, or the way that you hoped it would. And... Uh, and knowing that uh, the end is near and you've done a really good job so far and, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Just a sense of satisfaction. Well, I'm into my fifth and final sheet right here. <laughs> I, I did have probably had, a, had about a half a sheet left over and some miscellaneous pieces, but uh, um, I'm sure that I'll use that for something else down the road. I hang on to everything. You know, that's the problem. I've got like a small metal supply store inside of my shop. I've got a lot of stuff there. I hang on to everything. You just never know when you're going to use it. You know, that's that's the thing. But eventually, um, you know, rust sets in on some of it, and it just gets harder to use. And I ultimately uh, get rid of some of that stuff after a while. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I use the stuff I hang on to. It saves you a little bit of money. A uh, quick little story right here. <laughs> I've got another project coming up here shortly that uh, requires that's going to be a, a type of speakeasy gate. And I had another speakeasy frame that I had ordered for another project that I did. Hung on to it for about six or eight months. Said I'll never use this thing again. And um, I ended up throwing it out. And uh, now I need to go purchase another one. That example of not being able to hang on to things for long enough. All right, you can see that uh, I got in and out, in and out, in and out here too many times. Uh, I forgot to turn the machine on right there. We got that turned on. And now I'm finally, um, after getting this thing cut to the size, uh, getting, getting ready to weld it in place. This is the last piece right here. The final touches is the gate latch. This is a... Uh, magnetic uh, pull latch uh you know i've used these here recently on a couple of gates i really like them if it doesn't require a lot of tension these gates are lightweight and they're easy to access i like the way they just snap into place um and they're designed for some one inch material right here and uh, once you put those in they just uh you just slightly push them they self-close you pull them open they're easy to access i kind of i kind of like them a lot i've used them on on some of the lighter gates that i have and this is what it kind of looks like. You pull the latch open, and then you just snap it shut. Works good. All right, this was a great build, guys. I hope you, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it took me some time doing it, but you know, it's always something different in the shop. And uh, I, uh, I really enjoyed doing this, and the satisfaction of seeing it complete uh, is, is a joy. That's, that's all part of it. All right, this thing is off to the powder coater, and. Uh, 
this project is complete. All right, guys, again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out the website at jimbosgarage.com for your torch lead holders and some swag over there. Follow us on Instagram for stuff that you don't see on the videos and check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.